Listen, I hope this is real. I hope this is real. Like, you know how you see a headline and you really don't want to get your hopes up? You don't want to get your hopes up. But this video states that scientists say they can cut HIV out of the cells. Like, are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's listen, listen, listen. Scientists say they have successfully eliminated HIV from infected cells using Nobel Prize winning CRISPR gene editing technology. The hope is to ultimately be able to rid the body entirely of the virus, although much more work is needed to check it would be safe and effective. Let's get more on this and speak with Dr. Jonathan Stoyer, virus expert at the Francis Crick Institute. Hello, welcome to you. Thanks for being with us. So just explain how this process works. Well, I think before I do that, I have to give you a little bit of background about HIV and the disease it causes. So when HIV uh, infects a cell, it kills it usually, and this can result in AIDS and people will die. However, we have worked out ways to treat the virus and stop it growing. And if you take your HIV medication, you don't succumb to AIDS. However, this is, there is a problem here because we can't get rid of all the virus. Some of it will infect cells, go to sleep and persist for a long, long time, but occasionally reactivate. And if we are not taking medication, we're back to square one again. So for a number of years, scientists have been trying to find ways to get rid of the HIV from our cells. And this CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which we've heard about, is the current best chance of doing this. It consists of a way of, of delivering an enzyme into a cell that will cut specifically the virus, and it has this enzyme plus guides that will target it to give it this specificity. The experiments we've heard about are in cells. Um, they're not in, in, in humans or, or primates. But there is every hope that this kind of technology will be useful in the future in order to try and get rid of, uh, of HIV from this latent reservoir. So how far off do you think scientists are in uh, being able to get this treatment to work effectively then? Well, there's a lot of, there are a lot of problems. You have to remember we don't know very much about this viral reservoir. There are probably at least 10 to the 9 cells, a billion cells that carry these proviruses. And we don't know how many of those we have to eliminate in order to cure people from AIDS. And so this work is ongoing. Now, some studies... Yeah, but that's a huge step. A huge step. We haven't heard anything as far as advancements other than everybody pointing out the fact that they think Magic Johnson don't have it anymore. Like everybody can point to magic, but nobody understands or knows how he's done it. Other than we can say he had the money to go somewhere and whatever, whatever your, your theories are about magic. But we've never really heard of any huge major steps in advancement. So this is amazing. This and what I've been hearing about with the cancer, like with cancer, their advancements on on trying to stop and, and cure cancer, like this is this is some good news in 2024. This this is the type of stuff we need. These have been carried out in animals, um, and there have been reports of 70 or 80 or 90 percent elimination of the reservoir. But we don't know whether that's enough, and this is something that will be important to discover in the future. It, it's a real problem. If only, suppose only 1% of this reservoir survives, will that reactivate and cause AIDS again? I definitely don't have the answer to that question, but thank you very much for raising it and for explaining all of that to us. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Story, thank you very much. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Now in this video, we wanna check out what happened to the astronaut who was lost in space for 311 lonely days. Let's check it out. There are endless questions about the universe, but there are some that are more mysterious than others. From a giant void to unknown objects in space, here are the 20 most mysterious space discoveries. Number 20. The Giant Void. The void. An empty space. That's usually how we define the word void. But of course, 
This word has a different meaning when defining something from the universe. There are several voids in the universe. These are patches of nothingness where galaxies, if any, are few and far between. Most of the time, only stretches of darkness exist in these voids. Now, among the largest we've discovered so far is the Bootes Void. This void was discovered in 1981, and it spans about 330 million light years across. If you're having a hard time imagining just how enormous it is, it's massive enough to theoretically fit thousands of Milky Ways. Again, the word void means something entirely different when discussing the universe. <laughs> you see, the Bootes Void isn't completely empty. Within this vast nothingness, there are about 60 galaxies that we know of. Considering the size of the void, that's like finding a few grains of sand on an entire beach. I don't know if y'all just listening or just watching, but if that doesn't like make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, because imagine this, like these voids, these black holes or different things that are out in the galaxy and space and stuff like that. Imagine one appearing or spawning right near us and swallowing our planet. We don't know what's inside a black hole or a void. It's just nothingness. And all we know is that when you're dealing with a black hole, nothing can escape it. So you don't know. So, yeah, just looking at it and listening to that just makes me nervous. Scientists call these galaxies island universes isolated in a sea of emptiness. What's astounding or unsettling is that these voids dominate the volume of the universe. Yet, they contribute less than a tenth of the universe's total mass, at least theoretically speaking. But where do these voids come from? Well, they were formed billions of years ago. They started as something small until they clumped together and spread. And as scientists suggest, these voids will soon enough consume the entire galaxy. If it provides any comfort, however, scientists believe that this might happen in the distant future. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. The Great Attractor The Milky Way is moving, like most things in the universe. You see, there's an unseen and unknown force on the other side of the Milky Way that's pulling us like a magnet. It's hard to imagine, but as our planet is orbiting the Sun, our Sun is orbiting the center of the Milky Way, and together, we're hurtling through the cosmos at millions of kilometers per hour. But where exactly are we going? And what exactly is pulling us? Well, we don't know. All we know is that our galaxy, as well as other nearby galaxies, are being pulled toward a region of space about 150 million light years away. Because of how clueless we are about what it is, we can only name it the Great Attractor. Unfortunately, it's hidden from our view by the zone of avoidance a region filled with cosmic dust and stars from our own galaxy that blocks our sight line. Thanks to our technology, however, scientists have studied the Great Attractor by observing its gravitational influence on nearby galaxies and using wavelengths of light like X-rays and radio waves. You might think, how can something invisible have such a massive pull? The answer lies in mass. The Great Attractor is believed to be a colossal concentration of mass, including clusters of galaxies and dark matter which I'll talk about later, so stay tuned for that. Here's where it gets interesting. Recent studies have revealed that the Great Attractor is actually part of an even larger structure known as the Leniakea Supercluster. This huh. supercluster is a gigantic cosmic web, home to our Milky Way and about 100,000 other galaxies. Despite the increase in our understanding of this giant, we're yet to discover everything about it. Number 18. 1991 VG in November 1991, the Cold War was reaching its end, and in the midst of it all, James Scotty from the University of Arizona spotted something bizarre. This object, later named 1991 VG, was initially considered just another asteroid, but soon, its unusual characteristics had scientists scratching their heads. 1991 VG is only about the size of a small house, measuring somewhere between 16 and 32 feet in diameter. What's bizarre is that 1991 VG has an orbit around the Sun that closely resembles Earth's, making it an Earth-like object in terms of its path through space. Its size and behavior are perplexing, and we don't exactly know what 1991 VG is. Its brightness fluctuates in a way that's not typical for an asteroid. This led to all sorts of speculation. 
including theories that it could be an alien probe or space junk from a previous mission that somehow got lost in space. The idea of 1991 VG being an alien probe captured imaginations and even made some wonder if we had evidence of extraterrestrial technology drifting through our solar system. However, it's only a matter of time, y'all. Be patient. It's only a matter of time. All this stuff that we come across, discover, run into, happen to come across, like all of it. And we have these theories and different things about what we might think it may be. Give it some time. One of these times is going to be what we think it is, and we're not prepared. The more likely explanation, and far less sci-fi, is that it might be a piece of space debris from a previous space mission, possibly a spent rocket booster or a lost satellite. But given that its discovery predates many of the objects we've sent into space that could return in such an orbit, this theory also has its complications. Another theory suggests that 1991 VG could be a quasi-moon, a natural object captured by Earth's gravity. These objects can enter into a co-orbital motion with Earth, making them temporary mini-moons. This theory is supported by the object's Earth-like orbit and could explain its unusual brightness variations due to tumbling or spinning. As it stands, the true nature of 1991 VG remains a bit of a mystery. Number 17. Saturn's Mysterious Moon Peggy It sounds like a nickname you'd give to a pet, but Peggy is actually Saturn's moon, but perhaps calling Peggy a moon can be quite a stretch, as it's more of a moonlet or a moon in the making. Peggy was only known recently, in 2013, by astronomer Carl Murray and his team in the Cassini spacecraft. Peggy resides in the outer edges of Saturn's magnificent rings, specifically in the A-ring, the outermost of the planet's large bright rings. Scientists first spotted this small object due to an odd disturbance at the edge of Saturn's ring a kind of cosmic ripple, suggesting something was there, exerting its gravitational pull. Peggy is tiny, estimated to be just about half a mile in diameter. However, this tiny moonlet represents a live case study of how moons around gas giants like Saturn might form, aggregating material from the rings and growing over time. Unfortunately, Peggy remains elusive. Its small size and the dynamic environment of Saturn's rings make it challenging to observe directly. After its initial detection, astronomers have had difficulty tracking it, leading to more questions than answers. Is Peggy still there, slowly accumulating mass? Or did it break apart, unable to coalesce into a full-fledged moon? The answer eludes us to this day. Number 16. Neutrinos Imagine the universe is filled with invisible, super-tiny particles constantly zipping through everything, including you and me, your dog literally everything, at nearly the speed of light. These are neutrinos. They're so tiny and elusive that billions pass through your body every second, but you don't feel a thing. Now you might be wondering why neutrinos are so important and why they deserve our attention. You see, neutrinos play a crucial role in our understanding of the universe for several reasons. For one, they're a byproduct of nuclear reactions, like those happening in the sun and other stars, as well as in nuclear processes on Earth. Studying neutrinos can help us understand how stars shine and how the elements that make up the universe are formed. Here's why it's intriguing. Neutrinos are mysterious because they have mass, but it's so tiny that scientists are still trying to measure it precisely. There was a groundbreaking discovery because for a long time, neutrinos were thought to be massless. Their mass is a vital clue in the puzzle of the universe's overall mass and how galaxies hold together. Plus, neutrinos come in three different flavors. Yes, they're actually called flavors, and can morph from one flavor to another as they travel. A phenomenon known as neutrino oscillation. This behavior challenges and enriches our understanding of the laws of physics. Number 15. Sagittarius A. Of course, a space video wouldn't be complete if black holes weren't mentioned, right? This is one of the most bizarre black holes in the universe. But first off, what exactly is a black hole? Well, it's a region in space where the gravitational pull is so strong, due to a lot of mass being compacted into a very small area, that nothing can escape from it, including light. Now, Sagittarius A is not just any black hole, but an enormous one. And by enormous, I mean it's millions to billions of times more massive than our Sun. Scientists estimate that Sagittarius A has a mass about 4 million times that of the Sun. Imagine that enormous size being squeezed into an area smaller than our solar system. 
This giant is just 26,000 light years away from us. That See what I was saying earlier? See what I was saying? Now imagine one of those just popping up near us. It's bigger than the sun. So if it just, I don't know, wanted to get next to us or just so happened to drift near us, what does that mean for us? Like that's why they've been scrambling to try to figure out, but there's no kind of way. It's not like you can send a camera into a black hole. No, it's gonna, it's gonna be demolished. You won't get no data or information back from it. Like even, um, oh man, what's the scientist's name? Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Even he's like, he was like, man, if I'm on, if I'm on my deathbed, he was, he he said this, if I'm on my deathbed, send me into a black hole. I, he wants to know that bad. He wants to know that bad, but he still won't be able to relay no information back to us. So it's it's an enigma. It's one of the few that we have. Well. Not one of the few. We have a lot of enigmas, but it's definitely one that I don't think will ever be explained. Maybe. That's far, but it's close enough to allow astronomers to study the behavior of a supermassive black hole up close and understand how it influences the galaxy around us. The way stars orbit around Sagittarius A has been crucial in confirming its existence and measuring its massive pull. One of the most thrilling aspects of studying Sagittarius A is watching how it interacts with its cosmic neighborhood. When gas and dust get too close, they're heated to extreme temperatures and accelerated to incredible speeds, emitting powerful radiation before being swallowed up. These events are like cosmic fireworks shows, giving us glimpses into the ferocious power of black holes. But to this day, a lot of mystery surrounds this black hole. Number 14. Fast Radio Bursts First discovered in 2007, FRBs are intense bursts of radio waves that last a few milliseconds, yet release as much energy as the sun does in nearly a day or more. They're flashes of energy so powerful that they can travel across galaxies and reach our planet. The mystery of FRBs lies not just in their incredible power, but also in their unpredictability and the vast distances they travel. These cosmic signals have been traced back to galaxies billions of light years away, which means the events causing them are phenomenally energetic but what could possibly produce such powerful, brief signals? Theories about the origins of FRBs are as varied and colorful as the imagination of scientists pondering them. Some suggest these bursts come from magnetars, highly magnetic neutron stars that are the dense remnants of supernovae. These cosmic lighthouses could be spinning and flaring in ways that create FRBs. Others speculate about connections to black holes, or even more exotic phenomena, such as cosmic strings. And of course, no mystery would be complete without a wild card. Some have even suggested that FRBs could be signals from advanced alien civilizations. However, the truth behind the FRB remains a mystery to this day. Number 13. Major Gordon Cooper UFO Sightings Leroy Gordon Cooper Jr. was one of the original seven astronauts in Project Mercury, the first manned space effort by the United States. He has many achievements to his name but a little-known fact about him is his bizarre experience in space. In 1957, he was stationed at Edwards Air Force Base, and according to Cooper, he observed a strange saucer-like aircraft that landed on a dry lake bed and then took off at incredible speeds. He also claimed that the event was photographed, and the images were clear enough to detail the craft's extended landing gear. However, these photographs have become the stuff of legend, as they were allegedly sent to the Pentagon and never released to the public. But that's not the end of it. During his Mercury Atlas 9 spaceflight in May 1963, where he orbited the Earth 22 times, Cooper reported seeing a green object approaching his spacecraft. This time, there is less detail about the case. Gordon Cooper was a highly trained astronaut, a man of science, and a credible witness which makes his reports fascinating and perplexing. He publicly spoke about his UFO sightings, advocating for the government to acknowledge and investigate these phenomena. While shrouded in doubt, his claims are among the things that conspiracists believe. Number 12. So I guess we just add his name to the rest of the names of people and list of people who have worked for the government, who have seen these things. I guess all these people are lying. I, I guess so, huh? Doesn't that seem strange or odd? They're lying, but the government is telling the truth. There's nothing to any of this stuff. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, 
Himiko Cloud Discovered in 2009 through the combined powers of the Subaru Telescope in Hawaii and the X-ray vision of the Chandra X-ray Observatory, Himiko is named after a legendary queen of ancient Japan. This massive blob of gas extends over 55,000 light-years across, and it's about half the size of our own galaxy. This means this blob easily dwarfs our planet. Himiko existed when the universe was in its infancy, a mere 800 million years after the Big Bang, and according to our understanding of cosmic history, structures of this size and complexity should not have existed so early on. The universe was still cooling down, and galaxies were starting to form. Himiko's sheer size and luminosity throw a cosmic curveball at astronomers, challenging preconceived notions about the early universe's evolution. One of the biggest questions is its source of power. What makes Himiko shine so brightly in the early universe? There are a few theories. Some scientists speculate that it could be a massive galaxy in the making, a colossal nursery where stars are born at an unprecedented rate. Others suggest it might result from an enormous collision between young galaxies, a cosmic mashup lighting up the early universe. Another mystery is the cloud's composition. The early universe was mostly hydrogen and helium, but Himiko might contain heavier elements, which are typically forged in the hearts of stars. This hints at a more complex chemical makeup than expected for such an ancient object, suggesting that star formation and galactic processes were already well underway. Number 11. The Black Knight Satellite According to legend, the Black Knight Satellite is an alien spacecraft that has been orbiting Earth for around 13,000 years. Yes, you heard that right, 13,000 years. This mysterious object is said to be of unknown origin with capabilities beyond our understanding, silently watching us from the darkness of space. The story of the Black Knight has fueled speculation, conspiracy theories, and intense debate for decades. The origin of the Black Knight legend is a bit all over the place, to say the least. One of the earliest accounts dates back to the 1950s when newspapers reported that the US Air Force had detected a satellite orbiting Earth. What made this so mysterious? Well, it was before the launch of Sputnik, the first human-made satellite, which means this object couldn't have been ours. However, the lines get blurry. Astronauts and space enthusiasts reported strange sightings and unexplained signals, fueling the fire of conspiracy theories. Perhaps the most famous piece of evidence cited by believers is a series of photographs taken during the STS-88 space shuttle mission in 1998. These images show a peculiar object in space, which some claim is the elusive Black Knight. Look at it. It looks like it's just sitting there monitoring us. Monitor what we're doing our day to day, just watching us. Until we do something that it deems threatening. It, that's what it looks like. And what are we doing about it? We just sitting there acting like we don't see it. Like it don't exist. Like, you know, what satellite? What satellite? That's what we're doing. 1950s satellite detections are often attributed to misinterpretations of natural objects, such as asteroids. The mysterious signals? It's likely the result of Earth-based sources or natural cosmic phenomena. And the famous STS-88 photos? Most experts agree that the object is not an ancient alien satellite, but space debris, possibly a thermal blanket lost during the mission. Despite the logical explanation science provides, the legend of the Black Knight continues to captivate imaginations. Number 10. Saturn's Rings Now we're all familiar with Saturn, the sixth planet from our Sun. If one thing can be considered common knowledge about this planet, it's the rings it has. Saturn's rings are one of the most spectacular sights in our solar system. Made primarily of ice particles mixed with dust and rock, these rings orbit around Saturn, creating a stunning visual spectacle. But every 14 to 15 years, stargazers on Earth experience something extraordinary. Saturn's rings seem to vanish. This phenomenon is linked to the tilt of Saturn's axis and its orbit around the Sun. Saturn is tilted on its axis by about 27 degrees, similar to how Earth's tilt gives us our seasons. But unlike Earth, Saturn takes about 29.5 Earth years to complete one orbit around the Sun. This long journey means that the orientation of Saturn's rings changes gradually in relation to Earth, leading to these fascinating periods when the rings seem to vanish. It's not a complete mystery, but an interesting phenomenon nonetheless. Number 9. Face on Mars In 1976, 
The Viking 1 orbiter, part of NASA's Viking program to Mars, was busy snapping photos of the Martian surface, looking for potential landing sites for its sister lander. Among the thousands of images beamed back to Earth was one curious photograph showing what looked like a face. This came to be known as the face of Mars. This feature shows a face with eyes, a nose, and a mouth carved into the Martian hills as if by the hands of an unknown civilization. The image sparked a wildfire of theories, ranging from ancient Martian civilizations to alien activity, with people around the globe wondering if we had finally stumbled upon proof of extraterrestrial life. It seems like an intriguing phenomenon, but there's a logical explanation behind this. The face on Mars is an excellent example of pareidolia, a psychological phenomenon where the human brain is wired to recognize familiar patterns like faces in random or ambiguous images. I bounce back and forth with this, with this image, this video, this picture, this footage. I bounce back and forth. Part of me wants to say yes, pareidolia. Part of me wants to say no, that's the people they were talking about that were buried there, that could be buried. And we just happen to catch a photo. That looks like a face to me. I know it could be a rock. I know it could be volcanic. I know all the possibilities. But that still looks like a face to me. It's the same reason we might see shapes in clouds or a man on the moon. Even so, many continue to believe this face is evidence of alien activity on Mars. Number eight. Jupiter's Great Cold Spot Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, known for its swirling storms and vibrant bands. However, it's known for its bizarre cold spot. Using the Very Large Telescope, yes, that's the actual name of it, scientists discovered a cold spot in its upper atmosphere, specifically in the planet's northern hemisphere. But wait, how can a planet known for its extreme heat and turbulent atmosphere have a cold spot? Apparently, it can. This region is significantly cooler than its surroundings, with temperatures about 200 degrees Celsius or 360 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the surrounding areas. To this day, this spot remains shrouded in mystery. Number 7. Story Musgrave and Space Snakes Story Musgrave is as amazing and as unique of an individual as his name. He's an astronaut, a poet, and a surgeon. However, he's known for one claim, Space Snakes. During a space shuttle mission, Musgrave reported seeing something extraordinary and baffling, white floating objects outside the spacecraft that he described as resembling snakes in space. Musgrave's description of space snakes has been a topic of much speculation and intrigue. Could these have been extraterrestrial creatures, undiscovered phenomena, or perhaps something more mundane? That's the thing. We remain clueless about it to this day. Number 6. Dark Matter Dark matter is something that makes up about 27% of the universe, and yet it doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect any light and remains completely invisible. You see, when astronomers look at galaxies, they notice that they're moving in ways that defy the laws of gravity. The culprit is dark matter. The only reason we know this thing exists is because of its gravitational pull on the things we can see. Dark matter holds galaxies together as they spin, and without it, Galaxies would be scattered, and we most likely wouldn't exist. And yet, despite the fact that it's among the most crucial things in the universe, we aren't even close to understanding half of what it is. Number 5. Tabby's Star Nestled in the Milky Way, over a thousand light years away from Earth, lies Tabby's Star. It was just another speck in the night sky until 2015, when scientists discovered something extraordinary. Unlike anything seen before, the brightness of Tabby's star dipped in unpredictable and dramatic ways, sometimes by as much as 22%. For reference, that's considered bizarre behavior for a star. One of the first and most sensational explanations for this activity is that the Tabby star wasn't a star, but an alien megastructure. Some even speculated that an advanced civilization could be building a Dyson sphere or a similar colossal structure around the star to capture its energy. Astronomers, however, have a more logical explanation for this behavior. Astronomers proposed several natural explanations for the star's bizarre behavior. One theory suggested that a swarm of comets might have passed in front of the star, blocking its light. Another idea pointed to massive dust clouds from colliding or disintegrating planets. There's even a theory about the star swallowing a planet, causing temporary fluctuations in brightness. To this day, however, 
The Tabby Star remains a mysterious enigma in the universe. Number 4. Dark Energy Dark Energy is a mysterious force that's pushing the universe apart. In short, it's making the universe expand. But is it any different from Dark Matter? Unlike Dark Matter, which clumps together and helps hold galaxies together, Dark Energy is like an invisible energy field that permeates all of space, pushing it to expand faster and faster. Dark Matter acts to hold galaxies and clusters together through its gravitational pull. Without it, most of the universe would fall apart, with galaxies flying into the void. On the other hand, Dark Energy is the force stretching the fabric of space and accelerating the universe's expansion. From what we know, Dark Energy makes up about 68% of the universe, while Dark Matter accounts for about 27%. That leaves a mere 5% for all the stars, planets, galaxies, and everything else we can actually see or detect directly. Mind-boggling, isn't it? Despite knowing it exists, scientists are still trying to figure out what Dark Energy actually is. Some theorize it might be the energy of space itself, the vacuum. Now you got me thinking. So what if those numbers flip-flop? Dark matter starts to becoming more than dark energy. What does that mean for the planet, solar system, galaxy, universe? What does that mean for everything? See, these are the type of things they face with on a day-to-day -day trying to figure out, especially once you discover something that's been unknown. Now you have to figure out, okay, what happens if that starts to deplenish? Like, what, what happens? Is deplenish a word? Deplete. Let's just say deplete. Let's just say that. What happens? Oh, now you all of a sudden got more dark matter than you got dark energy. What does that mean? Does that affect gravity? Does that affect our solar system? Does it affect what does it affect? Stars, the sun, orbit. What does that affect? And there's just so many unknowns about space, man. Vacuum energy. Others suggest new theories of gravity that could explain this cosmic acceleration without the need for dark energy. Number 3. Elst Pizarro Elst Pizarro, officially known as 7968 Elst Pizarro, or 133P slash Elst Pizarro, is a small body orbiting in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It was discovered in 1979, and initially, it was classified as just another asteroid among the millions in the belt. However, in 1996, something unexpected happened. Astronomers, including one of its namesakes, Eric Elst, observed it exhibiting comet-like behavior, complete with a tail. Now, I know that doesn't sound exciting to most of us, but astronomers find it intriguing. Typically, asteroids are rocky bodies that orbit the sun but don't have tails. Comets, on the other hand, are icy bodies that, when they approach the sun, heat up and release gas and dust creating the distinctive tail that streams away from the sun. Elst Pizarro, however, was sitting comfortably in the asteroid belt, far from the sun, yet showing off a tail. This behavior led to it being categorized as a main belt comet, a rare hybrid that acts like an asteroid and a comet. The main belt comet status of Elst Pizarro raises fascinating questions about the early solar system. It suggests that there might be more icy bodies lurking in the asteroid belt than previously thought, offering clues about how water and other volatiles were distributed in the early solar system. This could have significant implications for understanding the origins of water on Earth and the potential for life elsewhere in the solar system. But why does Elst Pizarro have a tail if it's so far from the sun? Scientists believe hmm. its comet-like activity could be triggered by minor collisions with other objects, exposing fresh ice beneath its surface. When this ice vaporizes, it releases dust and debris, creating the tail. Else Pizarro's dual identity challenges our traditional understanding of comets and asteroids, blurring the lines between these two categories. This proves that despite how far we've reached in understanding the universe, we have a long way to go. Number 2. Yang Liwei's Knocking Encounter This is the story of Yang Liwei, China's first astronaut, and the mysterious knock he heard while orbiting Earth. Yes, it sounds like a short horror story, right? It all began in 2003 when China launched the Shenzhou 5, marking its debut in demand spaceflight, with Yang Liwei at the helm. This mission was a monumental step for China, placing it among the elite group of countries capable of sending humans into space. As Yang Liwei orbited our planet, 
something unexpected and unscripted occurred. He heard a knocking sound, as if someone were tapping the outer hull of the spacecraft with a wooden hammer. Sounds horrifying, doesn't it? Imagine you're alone in a spacecraft, surrounded by the vacuum of space where sound as we know it can't travel. And then, you hear a knocking. There's no one else on board, and there's nowhere the sound could be coming from. It's just you, and something, or someone, knocking on your spacecraft. Young Li Wei described the noise as neither coming from outside nor inside the spacecraft. Imagine his bewilderment, the mix of curiosity and concern as he searched for the source of this sound, only to find nothing amiss. The spacecraft's instruments showed no abnormalities, and the mission continued without incident. Yet, the knocking remained unexplained. Upon his return to Earth, Yang's account of this eerie experience prompted investigations and speculation. Scientists considered various explanations, from the mundane to the extraordinary. Could it have been the expansion or contraction of the spacecraft's metal hull as it moved from sunlight into shadow? Was it debris or micrometeorites colliding with the spacecraft? Or perhaps something else entirely? Something beyond our current understanding? Who knows? And now, it's time for today's topic. What happened to the astronaut who was lost in space for 311 lonely days? Zero gravity, the unknown, one error away from death. These are enough to deter people from going to space. Sometimes, however, curiosity wins even the possibility of death. Perhaps that's why we continue to try and explore space despite the risks. One man experienced one of the most chilling things an astronaut could experience, floating in space for 311 long days. In the 1980s, an astronaut began his first long-duration space flight. His first trip lasted 150 days, and he decided he didn't get enough. By December 1990, he made preparations to leave our planet once again. It was on this mission that he became stranded in outer space for over 300 days, almost a year in an environment where humans weren't meant to last. With limited supplies and with no hope of returning, he thought that it would be the end of him. Many believed his life would end in space, but that ending is only true for creepy pastas about him. In the end, he came back alive. Does this story sound familiar? Well, that's because this is the story of the last cosmonaut, Sergei Kirkolev. Number one. I need so to look into some more of that story, man. That's just, that's unbelievable. And there's still people that still don't believe it. And that's why I want to dig a little bit more into it to learn about it, because I want to know what test did they do on him. After being in space for that long, that lengthy amount of time, your body will change. So I want to know how, how much different he was when he came back. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to be the same. And will he ever go back? I, I'd have a ton of questions for him. For you, seven sighting. The year was 1969 a pivotal moment in space history, dominated by the Apollo 11 moon landing. The Soviet Union continued its ventures into the cosmos with the Soyuz program. Soyuz 7, manned by an experienced crew, was orbiting Earth when something extraordinary and unexplained happened. As the crew of Soyuz 7 went about their tasks, they reported seeing an object that defied their understanding of what could and should exist in space. Descriptions vary but the consensus is that they observed a structure of incredible size and complexity, unlike anything known to be human-made. The crew described the object as a colossal angular structure accompanied by smaller objects that appeared to be maneuvering around it. What makes the Soyuz 7 sighting so captivating is not just the sighting itself, but the context and the individuals involved. These were seasoned astronauts, trained observers accustomed to the peculiarities of space. The Soviet space program, shrouded in secrecy, offered little explanation or follow-up to the public. This lack of information has only fueled speculation and curiosity about the sighting. Unlike the open nature of NASA's operations, the Soviet Union's tight-lipped approach to its space endeavors has left many questions unanswered. 